I suppose for me, um, partly it's more environmentally friendly, so it's non-leaching, so it doesn't leave a trace in the sea afterwards in the same way that antifoul does. It's ablative and it wears away and that's what stops anything growing on the surface and we keep reapplying that each year. So this is a, a much more environmentally friendly process. There's less waste because you're not doing the antifoul each year and all the mess that comes with that and the preparation with that and stuff into the water, um, the water cycle. So environmental is one of the reasons. Obviously this is meant to last at least 10 years so that means we don't have the associated costs with putting antifoul on for each of those 10 years not everybody applies antifoul every year some people do it every two i think it really depends on how often you use your boat because we are on board seagull for around six months a year and she gets quite heavy use we were wearing our um ablative antifoul away and we're needing to antifoul a lot more often to keep her nice and clean so for us this is quite a good idea because it means we don't then have to do that in the same way um, it's still a good idea to lift your boat and get it sling washed but that's not the same as going on to the hard and then spending two weeks doing quite a lot of hard work you can have a pressure wash in the slings if you need to grease your sea cocks or you need to um, change your anodes grease your prop you can do those things while you're in the slings and then go back in a few hours later so actually there's a lot less cost associated with lift out as well so we think that's another big benefit um, we have friends of ours that have put a copper bottom on their boat it's not this product it was another product and had it done um, approximately 10 years ago and theirs is fantastic so having had that experience of these friends and them not having 20 foul and how good their boat is how clean it is they get an improved flow through the water, um, you know, less maintenance. So all in all, really excited about going over to this product. A lot of people wonder about cost. Um, I have to say that I think in the long run, there is a benefit there. I don't think everybody agrees with this, but this is my personal view. If you take into account other costs to do with lifting out um, and not just the paint but the brushes, the thinners and all the different things that you have associated with putting antifoul on, different antifoul products to different parts of the boat, all those things, it, it really does add up to I think definite savings. Um, we contacted Copper Coat, in fact we got in touch with them at Southampton Boat Show, we had a really good chat with them, they asked us all about our boat, what type of boat she was, we gave them the make and model and they then did the calculations for how much of the copper coat we would need in order to cover the whole of the bottom of the boat. So they were really, really helpful. They were not pushy. They were very keen to be able to provide facts and there was printed information. So if you're thinking about copper coat, get in touch with them because we found them to be super helpful, super friendly, and they're able to answer quite a lot of technical questions, which I think is a real bonus for this product. Um, I think they give quite good service once you bought the product, so if you're unsure about application, things like that, you can get in touch with them and they give you more advice. So good product, good service, good people, we think. Obviously, we've got to apply it. Um, you can see our story as we go along. We have opted to get somebody to scrape the antifoul off the bottom. In this particular yard, they're not clean on the sand blasting method or a, any sort of blasting method. So scraping was our option. There is a guy here that does it, he does it all the time, so we decided to let him do it instead of us because he can do it cleanly and he's very careful. We know he does a really good job, so shout out to Paul at Cardiff Bay Yacht Club who's done a fab job. He's already started scraping our boat um, and we can show you some footage of the boat being scraped and what it looks like. And then when it's all scraped back, it's got to be sanded. So there's a sanding process. Um, ours is being sanded with a 80 grit paper to get that nice sort of white finish. Once that's done, we've got some keel preparation to do and we've got an encapsulated keel. So we just need to treat a few rust spots before we go ahead and decide whether that's going to get the full copper coat treatment or whether we go back to antifoul. I personally want to do the copper coat. So a bit more research for us to do. In fact, I've got in contact with them at copper coat to ask them for the best way to prepare the keel in order to apply it so we're waiting to hear back so being great so far so i'm really looking forward to their comments 
Um, our boat is 41 foot long. She's a fairly medium body boat, deep thin keel, two meter keel. Um, the costs, I know a lot of you are interested in the costs, so the, the, the full kit that they provided and they gave us a boat show discount um, and it was about, I can't remember the exact cost, it was about £1,200, something like that. So you can calculate the cost for yourself. Um, obviously, if you have work done on your boat, that's extra cost. Or whether you can, you can obviously apply it all completely yourself, which is what our plan is to paint the boat ourselves, um, mainly so we can learn how it's done and understand what is on the bottom and how to look after it and care for it in the future. Um, I hope you enjoy watching the clips of how the boat is done and what she looks like in progress and hopefully the end shots as well. Um, and we'll keep you up to date with what we think in terms of performance as time goes on. Enjoy the rest of the clips. Here you can see a selection of what uh, we got from Copper Coat when we ordered our Copper Coat for the yacht. Essentially the best thing to do is contact them and give them your make of yacht and some dimensions, the beam, the waterline length, the draft, etc. Ours is a yacht, so all that's important. They want to know whether it's a sort of light bodied, medium bodied or a full bodied boat. And then they will calculate for you how much you need and put together a price. So in your pack you get some um, epoxy resin mix. So the two parts mixed together, you get a little bit of thinners in case that's needed. You get enough rollers and um, the pads to roll on with and the copper comes in the bags as you can see there. So they supply a full kit for you to be able to apply that to the bottom of your boat and make sure that you get full protection. It also comes with a list of instructions. As a reminder, we're just showing you the bottom of Seagull. This is how she used to look. She's covered in blue anti foul paint and this is what we need to take off ready to put the copper coat on. Our project is making some progress. You can see the hole here is being scraped. I have to admit, we're not doing this ourselves. Um, we have paid somebody in the yard to uh, come, Paul from Cardiff Bay Yacht Club, he's been excellent. He um, He's scraping the hole for us to get all the old anti foul off. He's doing a brilliant job. Um, you can see that it's being mechanically scraped. You can see the lines where he's scraping it. He's done most of her now. He's done um, all of the hull. He's done both sides of our rudder. But at the moment, he's only done one side of our keel. So this side's still got to be stripped. If I go round and under, you can see that he's made some progress on this side. So that's going really quite well. And the surface itself, this is... Uh, smooth it, um, it's come out a lot smoother than i thought but there's a lot of sanding to do in order to get this prepped on and finished and then it's uh time for the copper coat a lot of hard work to come here's paul he's um the guy from the yard he's stripping the boat for us so you can see obviously what we showed you before but he's working today he's working on the keel um, He's getting off all the layers of paint down to the gel coat so that we can then sand it and prep it for copper coating. So yesterday I was out here and I used oxalic acid on the hull to get the brown stains off. She's looking much better now than she was earlier. Um, she's getting ready for a hull wash. I've done the top sides. I've done the spray hood. It's been washed and re-waterproofed. But this now needs a really good wash and a polish and then we can put the new stripes down the side and we're well on our way. So the anti foul is off and now uh, we're having the hull sanded. So it's going back with a um, 80 grit ready for washing and then the copper coat goes on after that. Paul's doing an amazing job, awesome. Spots off. Let's 
seems to work great. I suppose all we've got to do now is clean all the other rust off using the same method and then I can put some epoxy paint on. I think it's really important that we do it on a dry day. It's a really warm dry day today so we should have got more moisture in here whilst we're in the process of removing the rust. So hopefully it's all going to go as well as that bit and we'll be done really quickly. Right. Okay, so we've got all of our epoxy So today, um, having taken all the blue off yesterday, you can see these areas of rust along here. I'm going to um, try and get in there with a the dremel and a small wire brush and then maybe just treat it with a uh, rust treatment. I might clean it back again after that to the steel, but I need to get rid of all the rust, all of these dark spots, and then I'm going to seal it in with primer comp. step is I'm using some of this rust converter. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that I've got it all off. Um, use a little paintbrush. And where it's particularly bad along the waterline I'm basically just painting on a rust converter that it should eat into those little sort of pockets where it's a bit deeper than where I've been grinding out the rust and getting there and just use a chemical reaction to convert that rust to a safe format. I'll probably, you probably shouldn't, but I might clean this off afterwards because I want a nice clean finish when I'm done. Um, so let's see how this works. I think it takes a few hours to work its magic. It should make those areas that are, they look a bit dark grey really in the pits. They should go going really nice and black. Um, and that tells me that the reaction is done its work and hopefully converted any rust that might be present. So that's the next step. Uh, when I've done that I think I'll probably go back to removing the little bit of blue that's left around the waterline on the starboard side and I've got a couple of skin fittings just to clean the antifoul off. So it's going to keep me busy. So the next step for me is to use Primacon um, and put it over the steel areas that have been treated with the copper, um, not copper, the, oh, can't speak. The next step is for me to use Primacon to paint over any of the steel area which has been treated, freshly sanded and has nice bright steel iron exposed. Um, sorry, it's an iron keel, uh, so it's going to get some layers of Primacon prior to sealing in. So that's what I'm on with now. The first layer of Primacon is on and finished. Looking very good. Finally, I feel like I'm actually making some progress. Well, as you can see, all that Primacon has come off. It was extremely disappointing this morning to discover that we had to take all of that off. I felt like I'd made so much progress last time. But here we are. Well, to strip it all off with help of my friend George. I've managed to strip it all off today. So, oh, exhausted. Spent a whole day going backwards. Um, I'm hoping that tomorrow's going to be a better day, but the primer con has got to come off all of it. Um, it was the wrong paint. I found international paints and they really did make it very clear it all had to come off. Um, I need to use them to protect all over the keel. 
Um, so tomorrow I'm probably going to have to give the, uh, the steel a bit of treatment before I put the interprotect on to make sure it's not oxidised overnight. I think I'm too tired to carry on. It's quite exhausting and it's not for the faint hearted. Well, I'm mixing up the interprotect. So here's the interprotect. I need it three to one. So I've decided to use just a container. I always keep a bucket for rubbish. Um, it kind of helps, I think, when I'm in the yard. I hate seeing the rubbish around, so I always do my best. So just have a bucket. Keeps things a bit neater. A pair of gloves. Um, right. I've got to give it a good stir. I think the instructions say once we've given it a really good stir, we're going to leave it for 10 minutes to allow all the bubbles to disappear. Okay. Wish me luck. <laughs> so I've mixed the interprotect together. Don't know if you can see it, but there are some bubbles in there forming. I have to wait for about 10 minutes for all those bubbles to disappear. And then I can start work painting the freshly stripped keel, which I had to do all over again. Yesterday it was utterly soul destroying. I could not believe that I had done something that I thought was right and then realised it was very wrong. Um, I found International actually. International paints were fantastic. I said I think I've put the wrong thing on. Described the process I was doing and they said yeah I'm afraid so you've you've got to take all that primer con off. Honestly it was just utterly soul destroying. Um, I'm so, so pleased that actually a friend of mine, George, came along and helped me. She's helped me strip that keel, so it only took uh, a day in the end to get it all off. So it was only a day going backwards. It's all stripped down and ready to go again, and obviously Interprotect is the right paint. It's due to rain tomorrow, so it's really important to me today to get some layers of Interprotect on to make sure that the, uh, the cast iron part of our keel, which is the top half on this Hansa, um, doesn't start to soak up water and then oxidise and cause lots of rust. So I covered it overnight because I was worried about it raining. As it happened, it's all bone dry this morning, so giving it a light sand again this morning, just to make sure I'd uh, cleared up any little bits I've missed, brighten all the metalwork back up, ready to paint. It does recommend that you paint over the metalwork within an hour, so that is my aim today. Start at the top where the steel is, work my way down to the lead keel. Well, it looks like all my bubbles are out, so I'm gonna try painting this onto the keel. Never used this kind of 
paint before so it'll be interesting to see how it paints. I hope it's going to be really really simple. Here we are, ready to go. My paintbrush is a bit more laden than I would like because I've used it for stirring. God, it's going to seal it in and then I won't have to worry about the wet and the rain anywhere near as much. I can just come out and do coats when the day's good. I'm oh, so pleased. So, so pleased. What oh, an amazing feeling. And that's about it for me for the next 40 minutes probably. I'll go around and give us a really good coat. For us on this project um, of doing our copper coating, we have got a keel that needed some interprotect, as you already know. What's interesting is this interprotect is quite expensive to buy. It's currently 2022 and we are paying £41 a tin for this. This is my third tin, so that's quite a big expense in there that I hadn't really anticipated needing that much paint so there are things that crop up that you don't expect um, the interprotect is all over the keel now it needs one more coat so this final can is for that um, it is also on our rudder the rudder was stripped back um, and was quite bare so I've popped some on there just to give it some extra protection but interestingly, where we scraped the hull, there were quite a few sort of gouges in the hull. Um, you can see where I've been filling them. So we've filled this with a product called Watertight. Again, quite expensive to buy. Um, I think that was £25 a tin. Uh, and when it goes off, it, it sort of sets hard. And you sand it back and basically we can use Interprotect there as well just to make sure everything is sealed in. So there's quite a few of these around the hull. I only needed one tin. Um, but everywhere there's a little grey patch on the hull. I've used this product to deal with any gouges or scratches. I've also used Interprotect as you can see on instruments. So having spoken to international paints their suggestion was to clean any anti-foul off around instruments and into protect so that when we copper coat we can roll straight over the top and that isn't going to cause us a problem so I've spent quite a lot of time cleaning skin fittings and actually putting some into protect on them getting ready for this copper coat unfortunately I forgot to film how clean I got them but you can see our kill cool fridge plate and the kill cool fridge plate here hopefully you can see from this that I've got all of the underfell off all the way around and um, that will need to be masking taped up the day that we do the copper coat but it's now ready to go so there's a little bit more watertight to do another coat on the keel of um, interprotect and then I think after a bit of sanding on where I've put all the watertight on the hull She's probably ready to go, but we have to leave it for seven days for the volatiles to come out of Interprotect before we can put copper coat on. So making great progress, but still a little way to go.